just hi i'm checking to see if you guys can see me and hear me just gonna wait a few minutes for a few people to come in Wait a few minutes for all right. Okay, is that on my Facebook page? <laughs> Hopefully it's working. <laughs> Hi Lynn, how are you? Hey Caroline. I am just gonna give everybody a few minutes to come on in. I forgot to do that last time I went live and I just kind of started right away like it was a Zoom class. Forgot that people need a few minutes to um to come on in like that. But um, in case you don't know who we are, I'm Rhonda Segrist with the Stitch and Time Embroidery Designs. This is my daughter Tabitha. She's gonna be helping out a little bit tonight. Hi, Carolyn. Um, hi, Ann from Texas. Oh, we're almost neighbors, huh? We're right here in Louisiana. Anyway, I thought while I was painting. The little bunny tonight that Tabitha could read out some of the questions or comments or something so I can continue painting and get that part over with quicker. Hi Gloria. Gloria's in Shreveport. How's the weather? It was beautiful here today. I'm right outside in New Orleans. Hi Reen. <laughs> Is it still chilly up there Reen or are you guys having summer weather yet like us? I am so ready. We had a, a cold, a couple of cold days last week and I didn't like it at all. I had already packed away my coats. You're still cold? It was nice here today. I think it was in the 70s. I don't mm -hmm. remember. You're hot and waiting on showers tomorrow, huh? <laughs> well, the flowers are like that anyway. All right, you guys. So let me tell you why I am doing this fabric painting stuff. A long, long, long time ago, <laughs> when I was young, I loved painting. I did any type of artwork I could do. I crocheted, I painted, I drew things. I was just constantly always making something, anything with crafts. I wanted to do it. And I did a lot of fabric painting on t-shirts and tote bags and things like that. And I kind of forgot about it until one of my friends, um, Linda Rayburn, I don't know if she's watching tonight or not, but she introduced me to um, fabric pencils, which weren't around, or if they were way back then, I didn't know about them. And I thought I would give them a try because it looked pretty interesting. I used to draw with um, pencils and things like that way back then, but never on fabric. So I couldn't wait to um to try these things and they're pretty cool we're also going to talk about fabric markers and i have fabric paint because i decided to just try it all and just you know kind of relive my days from when i was younger and i had time to do such things <laughs> we've been real busy in the shop lately and on the weekends i've kind of just been putting a movie on the tablet and sitting by my my cutting table right there and watching a movie and painting with these fabric pencils and it is just so relaxing and um it just brought back a lot of memories so i'm gonna have to practice a lot to see if i can do things as well as i used to do them but um anyway i wanted to show you guys how they work and then i'll show y'all some of the things that i did with the fabric paint and the fabric markers which i thought would be great for kids i got jonathan to do some really simple line drawings for the kids for easter because i thought it would be fun if you guys could stitch some simple designs just they look like coloring book stuff just stitch it on a t-shirt or something and let the kids use the fabric markers because those are really easy to use so anyway that's the background here. That's why I wanted to do it. And it's just something different. Um, so that's what attracted me to it in the first place, that we're mixing something different with machine embroidery. You know, we like to mix heat transfer vinyl with it. And Reen did a live uh, a couple of weeks ago where she did yarn, which was really cool. I have all the stuff to try that, by the way, Reen. I can't wait to try that. Um, so, you know, let's mix it up and do a little bit like that. Gloria used to paint on fabric back in the 70s. Yeah, that's when I used to do it too, back in the 70s. Love that kind of stuff. 80s. 
I made you do it too? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> apparently I made Tab do it too. <laughs> All right. So let me switch my camera over to my um, little portable cutting table and I'll show you guys what we're using here. All right. So if you have any questions or comments, Tab's going to read them out to me while I'm doing this over here. And um, this is what I made the other day when I was playing around with this. Oh, let me turn on this light. Forgot about the light. There we go. Got a little bit more light here. So anyway, I stitched out this funny line drawing on a t-shirt. This is a 100% cotton t-shirt. And I drew, I drew on it and, you know, with the intense pencils. And then you have to wet it to make it turn into ink that kind of sinks into the fabric and becomes permanent. Yeah, um, yeah Rain, I do have a link to the um, pencils and the paint and the markers all on my website. If you go to a stitch in time designs.com, you can find the links under, let me see, I have my phone right here, so I'll show you guys real quick. I was going to wait to the end, but I'll show you now. Um, if you just click on the, the categories and scroll down to fabric painting and line coloring designs, I put all the links to those there. I put a link um, to the Der Derwent, I think that's how you say it, Derwent Intense Pencils. They come in different sizes. You can get 12 in a box or 24, 36. I think they go up to 72. And then I have a link to the fabric markers. And I have a link to the fabric paint. Of course, you can get any brand you want, but um, that's all on there. And right now we only have these two on there, the Easter set and the bunny that we're going to mess with today. But we are also going to work on a an alphabet that's just outlined so you can paint that too. And um, numbers. So like if you wanted to do something for a birthday or something, that'll be a lot of fun too. All right. Oh, glad you found us, Ruth. And hi, Renee. How are you? Okay. So anyway, this is the bunny that I did the other day. And I like it because it's soft. The embroidery is not heavy at all. It's just black lines. And I, I got him to do, you know, heavier lines here and there. But it all stitches out in one um, color with no trims or anything like that. So it's easy to stitch out. Those of you that are scared of stitching on t-shirts, you really don't have to worry about puckering or anything else like that. So it's really easy. You just stitch it out on whatever you want to paint, and then we're going to paint it from there. So tonight, I think we're going to paint it on this tote bag that I stitched it on. And behind here, I have some... Uh, paper towel so that it doesn't go through. You don't wet it a whole lot, but we don't want it to go through either. But before we get started, I wanted to show you a couple things that you need to know about doing it. Um, I have a set of 36 right here. I started out with a set of 12. And of course, you know, after I got into it, I'm like, oh, that's not enough. I need more colors. And I have a little thing in here which works great. I did a little color chart of all the colors in here. And I did one for the big set too, because when you put the pencils on dry, they look a different color once you wet them. They become a lot more vibrant and colorful once you wet them. So it's good to have this nearby. Just do that before you ever start painting it on anything so that you'll know what the finished color is going to look like. So tonight we're going to use four colors out of this set. And um, I did a, a color chart for this one too. I just, all I did was, you know, do a little square like that for each one. And then I used um, some heat set fabric painting medium. I need to put the link for that on my website too. You need something to wet it after you draw on something. You have to wet it. You can use water, but what I found that water will make it bleed some. So if you have two colors right next to each other, one might bleed into the other a little bit. Um, right here, I think I used aloe vera and it also bled a little bit. This stuff 
doesn't make it, you know, it stops it from bleeding so much. So this is a good thing. And we're going to use that tonight when we color on it. Another thing I wanted to tell you is these work much better on 100% cotton fabric. Um, I went on the website and read some tips and tricks for it. And you need a smooth fabric. Um, if it's too much of an open weave, of course, it's going to kind of look rough around the edges a little bit. So try to find something that's smooth with a tight weave. That's a natural fabric, like 100% cotton. This white was a blend, a polyester cotton blend fabric. And I did have trouble with it bleeding a little bit but when i started doing it on the 100 percent cotton i noticed that it didn't bleed as much okay so have a little test fabric nearby um you know this is really similar to this bag that we're gonna um color in in a little while anyway so you might want to test it before you stitch on something just get a little bit of the same type of fabric and test it and make sure it's not going to bleed and then it's going to um, work really well. Okay, so we talked about that. And remember to put something underneath or inside whatever you're going to paint on. All right, do we have any questions? New item to add to the craft. I know, Tammy, we're just always collecting something, aren't we? My craft room, my sewing room is just kind of like bursting at the seams there all the time okay so i'm going to use this sienna gold to just go into the ears here of course there is a white pencil in here in case i wanted a white rabbit but it doesn't really show up really well on this type of fabric so not sure what i'm going to use that for but right now i'm going to put a little bit of this Where's the sienna gold? It's right here. And if you look close, um, see what the pen looks like, the pencil looks like. It does look like a different color a little bit when it's dry as to when it's wet. But all you have to do is color in here. That's it. Tab, if you see any questions, just read them out. Okay. You don't have to be an artist or anything because, I mean, who in here has not had a coloring book and colors and sat down and colored with the kids or anything. We've all done that. Just stay in the lines. That's it. That's all you have to remember. And this is just so soft. The pencils are not like the paint. Um, it kind of, you know, soaks into the fabric and it really works well for that. Okay, let's see. I have my other bunny here. I'm going to keep on the side. So I can kind of follow along with what I did. I did make his nose. I put a little bit of fuchsia around his nose, which kind of looks a little bit dark right here when I'm doing it. But it won't when we wet it. Where do I get the designs? Okay. Um, the designs are at a stitch in time designs. Jenny Tap, can you type that up in the comments? Um, okay. And then are we gonna have a replay of this? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to use the Saddle Brown for the bunny. And if you notice, Am I just on the website? Yeah. Jonathan um, put white highlights with the thread. This, the white in the eyes are thread, and I forgot to stitch them on here. I just took it off the machine <laughs> too quick. But no one's going to notice that. You probably wouldn't have noticed anyway if I wouldn't have said something. Okay. But anyway, all right, Tabby typed up the link for us. And you see how it really, right now, it doesn't look like the same color too much yet, but it will when I get done. So just color it in. And what I really like about these ink tint pencils is if, you know, like right now I'm coloring it pretty light, but if I, once I wet it, I can actually go back and color on top of it while it's wet and add shading in like that or make it a little bit darker in some areas. When I'm finished with this, I'll show you how I did that on a flower. 
that I colored with the ink tense pencils, a simple flower just to make it look a little better. But I like the watercolor look that the pencils give you, where this fabric paint doesn't really give you that type of look, but the pencils do. And when I was younger, I did do some watercolor paintings. I kind of just even forgot that I used to paint, you guys. <laughs> Tabitha and I have been spring cleaning a little early. And um, we've been going through pictures and I found the other day and posted it on my personal Facebook page. I painted an entire mural when I was younger, when Tabitha was a baby. And how old are you, Tab? 38? Uh, yeah, I'll be 39 in August. Yeah, I painted a mural. It took up the entire wall in her room when she was a baby. Of Sesame Street. And I kind of forgot about it. Are, are they washable? Yeah. Yes, it is washable. We're going to talk about the washing instructions um, in a little bit, too, before we leave. We'll go over all that. But yes. It is washable. Once you wet it and heat set it, it is permanent. But see, you really can just be quick. The other night when I was doing this, I was really doing it kind of slow and just watching a homework movie and it was just so relaxing. I am doing it a little faster with you guys. So that I can show y'all how it's done. Okay, so I think that's all the green there. And we're going to do the roses in poppy red. And it looks kind of muted. But what I did do when I was coloring in these roses the other day is I colored them all in like this. And I actually kind of went back. And just pressed a little bit harder in the center just to give it some depth. Like that. Do any of you paint or like to color anything? Does anybody paint? Are they saying that, Tabby? Ruth bought the design, but she's anxious to paint. She's going to try fabric paint first. Yeah, Ruth, I bought some fabric paint. I haven't had fabric paint in here for years, and I ordered some from Amazon last week and messed around with that this weekend, too. I kind of wish I still had some of those things. Hmm. Not sure what that is. All right, see, it really doesn't take that long. It is quicker than embroidery, isn't it? <laughs> and it's softer, so I thought it would be great for a t-shirt. Now, on the on the Derwent website, it does recommend um, ages 14 and up to use these pencils. Not sure why. Tabitha said, <laughs> Tabitha said, so the little kids won't eat them. <laughs> Not sure what they're made of, but um, I think the kids would be good with fabric paint or the fabric markers are so easy for little kids. Of course, you know, you might want to put an apron on them or something because... I use too much now. Um, yeah, I mean, if they're painting with markers and they're going to get it all over their clothes. It's not going to come out. All right. I'm just making it a little darker at the bottom like that. And like I said, I can go back and draw right over it as long as it's wet to make some areas darker. But see how quickly I think I got it all painted in. And then... We're going to take some of this. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. Like I said, you can use water, but um, I find that this worked better. And there's there are many different 
brands of this on Amazon. I got this one because it said heat set fabric painting medium. You guys see that it said that? Um, I'll, I'll add the link to this on my website too. But this is another one. It's textile medium. It's the same thing. Um, somebody in another group that was doing things like this said that you can use aloe vera, the clear kind. But I did try it and it did kind of run a little bit. So um, I didn't want to use that too much. It was too hard. You want to just wet it just a tiny bit. So then you just go and wet it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can move my camera down lower while I'm doing that. Can y'all see that okay? A little better, right? Can you see it, Tim? Yeah. What I also did was try to stay a little bit away from the edges. So that it wouldn't run but i do find that having the 100 percent cotton helped the issue with running a lot better and you can see where it's wet so that's easy let me see if i can get some more light down here for you guys can y'all see that good enough You can kind of blend it. Um, I don't have one right by me, but Derwent even sells some like blending pens where you can take two colors and paint. Like if I wanted to paint another color on top of this, maybe put some pink in here. I could go back and do that. Should I try that on one of the ears or do you guys think I'll mess it up? <laughs> but you can go. See how it's... I'm adding a color in like that. That's not too bad. Kind of made his ears look a little wild, but. Do you have to heat set it when you're done? Yes, you do have to heat set this when you're done. Let it dry and then um, let it just dry naturally. And then we're going to, well, I'm not going to do it on screen tonight, but just iron over it and it'll heat set it when. Um, when I did it the other day on my t-shirt, just to be careful, it didn't say to do it, but I did put like a cotton cloth on top of it before I ironed it because I didn't know if any of the color would come off onto my iron or not, but um, it did not come off onto the cotton that I, I put over it to iron, but I would, I'm going to still do that anyway. This is new to me too. So, um, gosh, the bunny's ears kind of look like they're on fire, huh? <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't have added that in, but since I added it on one, I need to add it on the other. Maybe it's got an ear infection. Who knows, <laughs> right? <laughs> and if you need to um, wash your, like, I noticed the other day when I was using some other colors in doing this, I did have to wash my brush a little bit in between colors before I started doing this again. Infection for sure. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Hey, Denny. I think Denny's been messing with these too because Linda's got us all messing with these things. I hope you're feeling better, Denny, and that you're on the mend. Are you up and about yet? We have a, um, John Deere has a group where we've been painting with these things. And I am just so glad it brought my paint, my painting thing back. Boy, I'm going to have to add some more color to this poor bunny somewhere. But you can keep adding in colors and messing with them. As long as they're wet. You like his ears, Renee? Let me see what this white does. Can I lighten up the poor red on his ears and put the white? Not really. Does it look like it's lightening up? It's making it a little pinker. Maybe it's raising it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Still in the boot. 
another three or four weeks feels better though. Uh, well, Denny, you're still in a boot. Oh my goodness. Well, are you getting a lot of painting done and digitizing? <laughs> uh, did you use black embroidery thread throughout the design? Wondering if using different color thread would the would paint the would that paint the thread too? Um, I used black throughout the embroidery design. I do not know if it will paint the thread because I'm using polyester embroidery thread. Um, I have no idea. I kind of wanted it to have the look of a coloring page or something. So, um, yeah, I just used the black. I like the, I like the way the black looks, but if you try another color, I would love to see how it turns out. So remember, I put, um, I put a little bit of the pink pencil right there on his nose. I think our bunny has a runny nose and an ear infection because I, um, <laughs> I made his ears a little bit too red. But that's the beauty of this. I'm just experimenting. And I thought, um, you know, while I was still early on in the process of just messing around with these things and seeing what they could do, I thought some of you guys might like to experiment with me, like grab some of these things. And, and um, I'm, I did make some simple designs too, like I said, if you don't want to mess with this bunny and we're going to be doing some lettering stuff. So that you can put names, you know, like if you want to make a happy birthday banner with it or something. But um, do you guys see this? This is actually pretty easy. I find it not as messy as the paints, as the fabric paints. And pretty easy to do. I see a few places where I didn't get it wet enough and I can tell now that it's kind of drying some so I can go back and fix those spots. But I just love the watercolor look of this. Interesting that you're not rinsing between colors and it seems to not really bleed into each other. Yeah, it actually doesn't. Um, Unless, you know, the other night I was um, using some pretty dark colors on something I was, and I did have to rinse it a little bit, but um, yeah, it doesn't really get onto the brush very much, just a tiny bit. So it really makes it, it's, it's kind of an easy and quick project. I might have to make some bunny pillows for my, um, on my couch. Jenny's of course, when you're doing this, you're going to have to find, oh, Tab, you didn't tell me I was off the screen. What? <laughs> oh, I didn't, what do you mean you were off the screen? When I was painting this bottom part. Oh, I didn't know. All right. <laughs> I never you, you know, it's good to have a few different size paint brushes because when you get to the smaller areas, it, I don't know if it would work right just to take a big paintbrush and go through the whole thing. Probably not. So I have several size paintbrushes. Jenny said she's done a lot of painting, just didn't know where to get the designs. Yep, a stitch in time designs .com. We just have two on there right now, but we are working on some more. Stephanie's in here. She said she loves the bunny. Hey, Steph. I watched your um, live earlier with Dime. That was so cool. Those things you guys were making, those little purses were so cute. I kind of love watching all the lives because everybody's so she creative. She said she saw you. You saw me in there? Okay. I, was, I wasn't in there the whole time, but um, I was in there for a while. Y'all did a great job. This brush is flower from uh, Beauty and the Beast. Do they? Mm hmm You know the flower he has in the little thing at the end? Uh -huh. Yeah. That reminds me. Look how much the, the pink. I think, what color did we use? Poppy? 
This is Poppy Red, and if you notice how light it is before you put this medium on it, and look how bright and pretty it turns out after. I am just really glad that I'm painting again. <laughs> Deborah wants to know what's in the bowl. Um, the bowl is um, heat set fabric medium. I don't have a link to this on my website yet, but I'll stick that on there too. I'm using it in the place of water. You can use water, but um, I did try with water when I first started doing this a couple of weeks ago. I tried with water and it made it bleed into the surrounding fabric a little more. So I wanted to try something a little thicker. I did try aloe vera because that works too, but it did bleed also. But then I switched fabrics and changed to 100% cotton fabrics, which didn't seem to bleed much at all. The first few times I tried this, I was using a, a cotton blend fabric to do it on. And it was really hard to not get them to bleed out of the lines. But this is 100% cotton tote bag. And the t-shirt I showed in the beginning is 100% cotton t-shirt. So that worked really well. And the, the textile medium, this fabric painting textile medium, seems to be the best thing I've tried so far to stop it from bleeding outside of the lines. And just, you know, you just want to barely wet your brush so that it doesn't soak the fabric. What happens if you color outside the lines? Reen wants to <laughs> oh, well, Reen, I have done that already quite a few times. And you know what? It's artistic merit. That's what it is. <laughs> um, it's just what we do sometimes. I have a few that I have colored outside of the lines pretty good on. And um, it looks okay. No, it's not that bad. Okay, so I'm going to leave it dry. And then what I'm going to do after it dries is I'm going to just put like a piece of cotton on top of it and let it um, and iron it to heat set it. And then the washing instructions on the website for these pencils say to, it says it's recommended to hand wash, turn inside out and hand wash and hang to dry. But it says you can put it in the washer um, with cold water, just turn it inside out. I guess that's so everything doesn't, you know, fade it or anything. It really doesn't take that long to dry, Renee. Um, of course, the more that you wet it, the, um, longer it's going to take to dry but I really didn't wet it a whole lot but what do you guys think about that you know what I kind of like the infected ears on the bunny <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I might like that <laughs> all right so let me go back because I know some of you came in here late what, store, what stores carry the paint pencils um I don't know if Hobby Lobby and all have this but I got these on Amazon it's Derwent ink tents, um, ink pencils, and these are made for fabric. There are different ones. I can't remember the other ones, but Derwent makes a few different kinds of pencils, but these are made for fabric. So you can get a big set. You can get a little set. Oh, yeah, I remember the card um, shirt boards. Oh, that's yeah, I remember way. those too. I actually put paper towels inside the tote bag, Green. I just put, you know, like five or six paper towels in between so it didn't go through to the back side. At least I hope I didn't. Maybe we ought to check it, huh? Nope, it didn't go through the back side. Okay. But, um, Sandy, hope your bunny's feeling better by Easter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I used. Okay, so this demonstration was done with these the Derwent Ink Tent Ink Tense Pencils. If you go to my website, I'll show this again for those of you that came in late. Is there any duplication of the 12 pencils and the 36 pack? Is there any what? Duplication. Like, is multiple um, colors? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. I made the little color chart. So, yes. Yeah, there is. Because I just used Poppy Red on this one. So, yeah. There's a duplication of them. 
Just but said Hobby Lobby has them. Oh, they do? Okay, great. I'm going to have to take a ride over there and see. They have a great website, and they also have ink tents blocks, which looks like a square chalk, and it's wide. So I'm guessing if you want to use something like that, you could cover big areas with that. I'm sure that I'm going to end up trying that too. But anyway, if you go to my website, a stitch in time designs.com and click on I'm on the phone so I'll click on those three little dots and go down to fabric painting and line coloring designs um, I did put the link to Amazon link to the ink tents pencils to fabric markers and to fabric paint on there and then right now we just have these two sets I'm going to show you the other set in a minute um, on there but we will be adding some more soon so you can find all that pretty easy. And let me show you video. what we have on the mm. website right now. Where's the video going to be to watch later? Um, yeah, this video will be available. You can just watch it on my Facebook business page. It will be on there. So this is the bunny that we just did, the original design. That's what it looks like before we started painting it. And then I also have a set that is um, called Easter Red Work. And we did these with kids in mind that they could paint on a tote bag or a shirt or something. So there's five designs in that set. They're all really simple um, to do. So I did these with the kids in mind, but I actually had fun painting those too. Yes, you can use freezer paper too. Okay, so here are a few other ones I did with, um, yeah, Reen, I think you should let Isaac do this. I think it would be a good project. I took three of those Easter red work designs. These are all done with the ink tents pencils. This one I took a little bit more time with. I had the petals just pink, and then I decided that maybe they needed some shading and some depth to them. So I, after it was wet, I colored it in all one color, and then I used the, the fabric painting medium on it and wet it, and then I went back with the same color pencil and just made it darker like that. So I kind of like this watercolor look. Um, these, I didn't do it, but it still has that watercolor look a little bit. So these are all done with the ink tense pencils. Um, these I did with fabric markers. So I uh, bought two sets of fabric markers off of Amazon to play with. I've got these, these that are a little bit fat. They're the Tulip brand. And then, of course, this is a bigger set. And I have to say, I'm, I'm not that happy with these. I probably will get a nicer set, try another brand or something to see. I mean, they do a great job. I just wanted to try something else. So um, this bunny was actually done with the fabric markers. And if you look, it looks just like a coloring page, doesn't it? So it just looks like I colored this or something, which I think is cute. The fabric markers are also permanent. Um, this little chicken and the eggs, those were all done with the fabric markers. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken or the egg. <laughs> Did you say that, Tab? <laughs> okay. And then this, I ordered fabric paint. Of course, you can go in Hobby Lobby and get a simple thing. This fabric paint in Hobby Lobby was $2.99. But that's not nearly enough colors for me to play with. So I um, found this box of fabric paint. And this is what I have the link to on, um, on my website. It's got uh, 24 bottles, lots of different colors in here of fabric paint. Do so you have to heat those too? Um, I think that, you know, whatever you buy is going to come with instructions. And I'm pretty sure that this said it needed to be um, heat set to. But I am not sure. This does say place a pad underneath. This one says let dry for about six hours. To set the paint, iron the back side using medium heat for approximately five minutes. Geez, I wonder if you could put that in the heat press. <laughs> Might burn whatever you have it on, though. But anyway, this is a nice set of fabric paint. I don't remember the price on it, but I do have the link to it. And if you're going to use fabric paint, you can get these inexpensive little things to um, use on Amazon, too, because you're going to want to just pour a little bit out, whatever colors you're using. 
So lots of different choices there, fabric paint, fabric markers, these awesome ink tense pencils. I did these with fabric paint. And of course I kind of, it. the fabric paint dried really fast. I found it started really drying. Um, so I was able to go right over and just add some little details in with different colors. Um, of course, if you want something to be white, then fabric paint is the way to go. And the fabric markers don't have white in them, but the fabric paint does. And of course, the white's going to cover whatever you're using. So on these, I opted to use the fabric paint. But aren't these cute? Rain, I think Isaac would really like doing this kind of stuff. You know, he can make his own little Easter shirt. All right. So what do you guys think? Do y'all have any questions about it? Um, like I said, all of them are going to have their own um, instructions for heat setting. Everything, I think, said heat set. I'm pretty sure even the fabric markers say that when I read um, that. Well, this one says apply color to fabric and let dry 24 hours. Machine washable, best on white and light colored fabric. So just whatever you buy to use, just make sure that you read the instructions on how to do it. And I thought this was just a fun thing that's a little bit different and gives us some more options. Um, actually, Denny, I have not washed it yet, but I'll, I can do that tomorrow. It's been sitting for about a week, so I know this one's dried and cured. <laughs> by now, but I'll go ahead and do that tomorrow and then I'll post it in my group. I think you're in my group, but I'm going to flip it inside out and probably throw it in the washing machine just to see. Let me be really rough on it and see what happens. It wasn't that hard to do, so um, I can, you know, I have lots of t-shirts in here. I always have lots of t-shirts in here, so um, I don't mind ruining one just to see. <laughs> how it works. All right. I'm excited to fabric paint again to Gloria. I used to really, really like that. Yes, Susan, the bunny is our design. It's at a stitch in time designs.com. I made a new um, collection there. If you click on the three little things at the top and you see all the collections on the left hand side, or if you're on a mobile phone, they're down the center. It says fabric painting and coloring line designs. I have the links to all the products we used. And then all the way at the bottom, there's the bunny and the Easter set. And we will get some more stuff up there soon because those are pretty, they're not that bad to do. And uh, I don't know, Jonathan did it, not me. So <laughs> <laughs> he's really good at red work. And, you know, just doing everything um, all in one like that. Hey, thank Sandy. you. Thank you, Gloria. That's our favorite. That's our, um, the design that I think I'm most proud of. Jonathan's probably most proud of the dragonfly, but um, I mean, his, yeah, we got his spider. There's one outside too that held up pretty well. Yeah, it did. I grabbed the one inside for you if you want to see that real quick. This is actually an embroidery design. The body is freestanding lace and it stitches in two pieces, the tail and then the head. Um, and then we have instructions on how to put it together. And the wings are not freestanding lace. The wings have to be stitched on something and they are stitched onto two layers of iridescent mylar. And you will find this on our website too. And then everything gets hot glued together. There are even placement lines that stitch out on the body so that you get the wings in exactly the right place. So this is on our website too. Sorry, Tab. <laughs> Almost wiped Tappy out with that. Um, that's on our website too. You can get it for nine and a half by 14 inch hoop or eight by 12 hoop. The eight by 12 hoop, you just stitch out more pieces, but it does come out exactly the same size. All right, so Denny, you already tried to wash yours huh? and you didn't heat set. I'll try it tomorrow and, and let you know. All right, does anybody else have any more questions? Who's gonna try this with me? Who wants to experiment on um, painting on fabric? I just thought it'd be a fun thing for us all to do. Have some new things to do. All right, thanks everybody for coming. 
and head on over to our website and check it out. And I appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. And we'll see you soon. Good night, everybody. Oh, wait. <laughs> Tab said she can't get used to being backwards because yeah. we're looking at us and we're kind of backwards. So <laughs> we'll get used to it. We're pretty new at StreamYard. We've been using Zoom for a couple of years and now we're switching to StreamYard. So have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us and good night.